Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at portuguesepod101.com. Hi, everyone. Do you know how to say I love you in Portuguese? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Eu te amo. Eu te amo. Eu te amo. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say... Eu tenho uma queda por você. Eu tenho uma queda por você. Eu tenho uma queda por você. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say... Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Oi, gente! Hi, everyone! Paloma here! E aí, tudo bom? E aí, how are you? Welcome to Top 10 Phrases to Amaze Native Speakers! Além do português, eu também sei outras línguas. Apart from Portuguese, I can speak other languages as well. If you say this phrase in Brazil, people will be so jealous at you because many Brazilians can't even speak English. So if you just say, eu posso falar outras línguas também, I can speak other languages as well. They will be like, okay, he's a genius. Ele é um gênio. Além do português, eu também falo inglês, francês e espanhol. Apart from Portuguese, I can also speak English, French and Spanish. Especially for people that can speak Portuguese, Spanish, even French and Italian are very easy. Not very easy, but easier to learn. Estou aprendendo português sozinho. I'm learning Portuguese by myself. I think it's a pretty amazing sentence to say because people usually go to language schools in Brazil to learn English and Spanish usually. But if you just say, you know, I'm learning that by myself, they will be like, wow. No, eu não vou para escola. Eu estou aprendendo português sozinho. No, I don't go to school. I'm learning Portuguese by myself. Estou estudando português faz 10 anos. I've been learning Portuguese for 10 years. That's a pretty long, hard working path, right? Eu sei português porque eu estou aprendendo português faz 10 anos. I know Portuguese because I've been learning Portuguese for 10 years. Eu entendi tudinho que você disse. I completely understood everything you said. Using diminutives in Portuguese sentence shows that you can, you know, play with the language. So it seems like you're fluent in the language. If you say tudinho, that means small everything. <laughs> Sounds like very Portuguese, very Brazilian. Não precisa repetir. Eu entendi tudinho que você me disse. You don't need to repeat. I completely understood what you said. Eu consigo assistir filmes em português sem legendas. I can watch movies in Portuguese without subtitles. Famous Brazilian movies you should watch are City of God, Cidade de Deus, or Tropa de Elite, The Elite Squad, which are all-time famous movies in here. Não precisa se preocupar. Eu consigo assistir filmes em português sem legenda. You don't need to worry. I can watch movies in Portuguese without subtitles. Levou apenas um ano para me tornar fluente. It took me only one year to become fluent. I think if you're a native Spanish speaker, you might say levou apenas um ano, but if you're English speaker, it might take a little longer if you don't dedicate, you know, all your time to learn Portuguese. If someone tells you, wow, seu português é ótimo, wow, your Portuguese is great, you can answer, Não, não é nada. Levou apenas um ano para me tornar fluente. No, it's nothing. It took me only one year to become fluent. Obrigada, mas na verdade eu não sou brasileira. Thank you, but I'm not Brazilian, actually. Yeah, I think that's the most amazing phrase you want to hear. Nossa, eu achei que você fosse brasileira. Wow, I thought you were Brazilian. Obrigada, mas na verdade eu não sou brasileira. Thank you, but actually I'm not Brazilian. Português é divertido e fácil de aprender. Portuguese is fun and easy to learn. If you tell this phrase to your friends, I think they'll be amazed because we know Portuguese is not that easy. And you just say, No, não é difícil. Português é divertido e fácil de aprender. No, it's not hard. 
Português is fun and easy to learn. Posso memorizar umas 50 palavras novas por dia em português. I can memorize around 50 new Portuguese words a day. Um, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Usually people can memorize 10 to 20 words a day, but if you say you can memorize 50, they will be like, wow. Another word for memorize would be decorar, to know by heart. Você pode me ensinar mais. Eu posso decorar umas 50 palavras por dia em português. You can teach me more. I can memorize around 50 new words a day in Portuguese. Vou falar português como um falante nativo em 3 anos. I'll speak Portuguese like a native speaker in 3 years. That's a bold challenge, but if you're up to it, I think that's totally doable to learn and to be fluent in a language in 3 years. Eu vou estudar muito e vou falar português como um nativo em 3 anos. I'll study a lot and I'll speak Portuguese as a native speaker in 3 years. The end! Acabou! That's it for today! Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy our video and subscribe to our website and our channel! See you next time! Ciao! Portuguese? You can speak other languages as well. Portuguese, Japanese, Chinese... No, Chinese. Ni hao! Bo jiao, Paulo, ma! Oi, gente, tudo bom? Paloma here! Welcome to top 10 ways to remember words! Eu aprendo sobre as raízes das palavras e como palavras diferentes são relacionadas umas com as outras. I learn about the roots of words and how different words are related to each other. É mais fácil de lembrar as palavras quando você sabe as raízes delas. It's easier to remember words when you know the roots. So you can relate some verbs with now, for example, correr, to run, and corrida, running. Also, fight, luta, with fighting, lutar. Eu categorizo novas palavras com outras palavras relacionadas que eu já conheço. I categorize new words with other related words that I already know. I think, for example, you could categorize all words that are related to home. Lar, casa, casão, casarão, casinha. There would be different ways to say home or house in Portuguese. Eu costumo assistir TV ou vídeos no YouTube que são feitos para crianças pequenas. I often watch TV or YouTube videos that are designed for young children. One of my favorite shows when I was little would be Castelo Hatimbun. Hatimbun Castle. Another one that was my favorite was Cocoricó. Cocoricó is the sound that the rooster do. Cocoricó. Eu procurei alguns vídeos infantis no YouTube para aprender português. I searched for some kids' videos on YouTube to learn Portuguese. Eu escuto músicas e memorizo as letras. I listen to songs and memorize the lyrics. This is a very nice technique because usually you like the song you're learning, so it's easier to learn. That was one of the ways I learned English. Eu baixei várias músicas brasileiras para aprender português. I downloaded many Brazilian songs to learn Portuguese. Eu falo as palavras em voz alta para que eu possa ouvi-las. I say words out loud so that I can actually hear them. One thing is to understand the language and the other thing is to be able to speak and communicate in the language. If you don't try to speak it out loud, you will never know if you can communicate and speak in the language. So you gotta try and don't be ashamed. Não tenha vergonha. Just try to speak it. Eu falo tudo errado, mas eu tento falar em português. I say it all wrong, but I try to speak in Portuguese. Eu falo o máximo possível com falantes nativos. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. If you're speaking with native speakers, there's no way you won't learn the language or the words that they want to remember. Because if you don't say the correct words, they will help you and try to correct you. That's very nice to have people that speak the language to motivate you too. Eu tenho vários amigos brasileiros que me ajudam com o meu português. I have many Brazilian friends that help me with my Portuguese. Eu tento pensar em português, porque daí se torna natural para o meu processo de pensamento. I try to think in Portuguese, so it becomes natural to my thought process. One of the things that I noticed when I was learning English is that if you don't think in the language you're speaking, your brain has to do so many translations that you won't be able to become fluent in that language. So try to think little by little in the language you're learning, that will help you a lot. Quando eu estou pensando em português, eu não consigo pensar em inglês. When I'm thinking in Portuguese, I can't think in English. 
Eu tento usar a língua repetidamente no contexto da vida cotidiana. I try to use the language routinely in the context of daily life. You can cause little things in Portuguese in your house, like nouns, for example, spoon, colher, fork, garfo. You can also use your dog for talking to him in Portuguese and teach him some tricks in Portuguese. A minha professora de inglês só falava em inglês com o gato dela. My English teacher only spoke in English with her cat. That's true. Eu uso a repetição. Ler, escrever e falar as palavras várias vezes. I use repetition, reading, writing and speaking words over and over again. You know the commercial that is on TV and it's like every 10 minutes the commercial is there again on your TV? There's no way you forget that commercial, right? You gotta do the same with words. You just say that word again and again and again and there will be no way you forget it. Eu precisava decorar uma frase em português e fiquei falando ela o dia inteiro. I needed to memorize a phrase in Portuguese, so I spoke it all day long. Ler o máximo possível, especialmente o jornal, me ajuda a lembrar as palavras. Reading as much as possible, especially the newspaper, helps me to remember words. Newspaper is kind of advanced Portuguese because you won't find easy conversational words, they will be more formal and business words. But if you're already in that level, yeah, that would be a great help for you to read newspaper. Nowadays, you can find newspaper online and also on YouTube, there are many news channels. So that's a very good way to memorize and remember everyday words. Eu leio jornal todos os dias para aprender palavras de economia. I read the newspaper every day to learn economy words. O fim, the end. Thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time. Ciao! Oi gente, tudo bom? I'm Paloma. Welcome to Top Portuguese Words. Today's topic is Top 20 words you need for the beach. Óculos de sol. Sunglasses. Óculos de sol. Sunglasses. Preciso comprar um óculos de sol para nossa viagem para a praia. O que, que você acha desse daqui? I need to buy sunglasses for our trip to the beach. What do you think about this one? Praia. Beach. Praia. Beach. Em dezembro, a gente sempre passa o Réveillon na praia. É tão bom. Every December, we spend New Year's Eve at the beach. It's so good. Since December is summertime in Brazil, it's very common to go to the beach during Christmas and New Year's. Nadar. To swim. Nadar. To swim. Aprendi a nadar quando eu era pequena. I learned to swim when I was little. In Brazil, many people go to the beach, but they don't really want to go there for swimming. They prefer to stay there and get some tan. E yeah, bronzear-se. Sol. Sun. Sol. Sun. Eu gosto de sol, mas preciso tomar cuidado para não exagerar no bronzeado. I like the sun, but I've got to be careful not to get over tanned. Palmeira. Palm tree. Palmeira. Palm tree. Por aqui tem muitas palmeiras. É gostoso descansar embaixo delas. There are many palm trees around here. It's good to rest under them. If you say this word in plural form, palmeiras, this will mean a lot of palm trees, but it's also the name of a very famous soccer team in Brazil. Palmeiras or verdão, green. I'm not a palmeiras fan, but if you like this team, just leave in the comments, okay? Concha. Seashell. Concha. Seashell. Vamos caminhar na praia e pegar umas conchinhas? Let's walk on the beach and get some little seashells. Especially kids love to do that. Walk around and gather a lot of seashells to bring home and remember how great was their beach vacations. Canga. Beach wrap. Sarong. Canga. Beach wrap. Sarong. No Brasil é mais comum levar canga que toalha para praia. In Brazil, it's more common to take a sarong instead of a tower to the beach. The kanga is like this. This is my kanga. Yeah, it's like a very light textile, but it's good because you can dry yourself, you can put it on the beach and light, lay on it, and after, when you go out, you can, you know, just wrap around it and make a dress instead of walking in your bikini or your one swimsuit. Mar. Si. Mar. Si. Adoro ficar aqui olhando o mar. Mal percebo o tempo passar. 
I love to stay here watching the sea. I barely notice the time passing. Ah, Omar, what can I say about the mar? There are many, many beaches in Brazil, many seas that you can go. Um, most famous ones are the ones in northeastern part, Nordeste. Also, near Sao Paulo, we have Rio, and there is Paraty, Ubatubas in Sao Paulo. Uh, if you go to Santa Catarina, you can go to Florianópolis, that is a very nice city and it has a lot, a lot of beaches, very beautiful beaches. Eu amo mar. I love the sea. Jet ski. Jet ski. Jet ski. Jet ski. Olha, dá pra passear de jet ski. Vamos! Look, we can get a jet ski ride, shall we? You can use jet skis in beaches, but also it's common to have them in the rivers or lagoons in Brazil. Cadeira de praia. Beach chair. Cadeira de praia. Beach chair. Não esquece de trazer a cadeira de praia para sua mãe, viu? Don't forget to bring the beach chair for your mom, okay? Many people have their own beach chairs and also the guarda-sol or sun umbrella that you can bring to with you to the beach so you don't have to sit in the direct sun. If you don't have one, you can usually rent it. Well, of course, you're not gonna find it in very small or faraway beaches, but in the most famous one, of course, you always find chairs and sun umbrellas for rent. Castelo de areia. Sandcastle. Castelo de areia. Sandcastle. Quando eu era pequena, sempre fazia castelo de areia com o meu irmão. When I was young, I always made sandcastles with my brother. Yeah, I really loved to make sandcastles when I was little, but nowadays I just, you know, hope that some of my little cousins will come so I can also make sandcastles with them. <laughs> Caixa térmica. Cooler. Caixa térmica. Cooler. As bebidas ficam bem geladinhas na caixa térmica. The drinks are very fresh in the cooler. If you're planning to stay your whole day at the beach, it's a very good idea to bring your own cooler full of water and drinks like your beer or your soda or whatever, or even eat and put it in a cooler in uma caixa térmica. Maré, tight. Maré, tight. Só dá para chegar naquela praia quando a maré baixar. We can only get to the beach when the tide is low. When I was little once, the tide was low, so we were able to go walk into a sand bank. And then after a few hours, the tide got higher, so we couldn't walk back. And I had to you know, be cared by my dad. So be very careful with the mare, with the tide. Bronzeado. Ten. Bronzeado. Ten. Esse ano a gente vai pegar aquele bronzeado. This year we we'll get a great tan. Brazilians love to get tan because it means they had time to spend at the beach. You know, it's so good. Água de coco. Coconut water. Água de coco. Coconut water. Água de coco é bom para se manter hidratado. Coconut water is good to stay hydrated. I love, love, love to get coconut water when I'm at the beach. And after you drink all the water, you can ask for the guy to cut it in half so you can eat all that. We call it carne in Portuguese. It's so good. Chinelo. Flip flop. Chinelo. Flip flop. Adoro este chinelo. É super confortável para andar na praia. I love these flip flops. They are very comfortable to walk on the beach. I just use it every day. <laughs> flip flops. Filtro solar. Sunscreen. Filtro solar. Sunscreen. Não esquece de passar bastante filtro solar no rosto, viu? Melhor prevenir do que remediar. Don't forget to apply a lot of sunscreen on your face, okay? Better safe than sorry. Another form is protetor solar. Sun protector. Even if you're not going to the beach, it's very good to use sunscreen every day because, you know, there's sun everywhere, you know, right? Bikini. Bikini? Bikini. Bikini. Hmm, I can show this bikini. Lindo, né? Hmm, what do you think about this bikini? Cute, right? Brazilians also love bikinis. There are so many colors and shapes and sizes. Yeah, you can have like tall, normal ones, but you can also have like very small ones that most Brazilians like. 
Bikinis are the two-piece swimsuits for women. If you want the one piece, it's called mayo, sunga, spiro, sunga, spiro. Meu irmão só usa sunga. Falei para ele trazer uma bermuda, mas não quis de jeito nenhum. My brother only wears speedos. I told him to bring trunks, but he didn't want to at all. It's funny, but in Brazil, speedos or sungas are still very common. If you go to the beach, don't get shocked. You see a lot of sungas. But if you want to be more conservative, you can bring your own bermuda or trunks or shorts. Sorvete. Ice cream. Sorvete. Ice cream. Que delícia esse sorvete de melancia. Vou pedir mais um. How delicious this watermelon ice cream. I'm going to order one more. If you want a popsicle, you can ask for a picolé. The end. That's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. What word do we also need for the beach that we forgot? Let us know in the comments. See you next time. Take care. Ciao. You've just gotten off a bus at a bus terminal. Suddenly, a person hands you a leaflet. What kind of deal is offered on this leaflet? What kind of deal is offered on this leaflet? The offer is buy two, get three. Compre dois, leve três. Hi everybody, this is Paloma from PortuguesePod101.com. Do you know what monsters people from Brazil are scared of? In this lesson, you learn about three scary monsters in Brazil. Let's start with the most popular monster. Mula sem cabeça. Mula sem cabeça. It means headless mule. This is the spirit of a woman cursed for her sins. The cursed woman's spirit was turned to a fire-spewing headless mule. It gallops through the countryside from Thursday evening to Friday early morning, haunting anyone that crosses its path. That sounds pretty scary, right? You might have heard about the next monster. The next one is... Alemoa. Alemoa. Alemão is the word for German, but when talking about a monster, Alemoa refers to a blonde female ghost. She is a blonde German woman who haunts the island of Fernando de Noronha. She seduces reckless, wicked men and carries them to their deaths. Okay, here's the last one. Boiuna. Boiuna. Have you heard of this next one? This is the black snake. The boiuna is a scary black snake. It lives in the Amazon and comes out only at night. The snake scares fishermen and others away from its watery home. Let's wrap up this lesson and recap what we've learned. Listen to the names of each monster and repeat after me. Headless Mule Mula Sem Cabeça Mula Sem Cabeça Blonde Female Ghost Alemoa Alemoa Black Snake Boiuna Boiuna Well done! Do you know how Brazilians celebrate Halloween? 
Brazil is unofficially celebrate Halloween, but is a well-known festival in the country. They do, however, hold festivals to honor their dead. This takes place on November 2nd and it's called Finados. And that's it! You just learned about three of the scariest monsters in Brazil and about Finados, a festival similar to Halloween. And now, learn Portuguese twice as fast by downloading all your PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, pickup lines, business etiquette, and more. Check out the description below and go to portuguesepod101.com now. I'll see you next time. Ciao! I love Ibli being my snake. I don't know how to be a snake. Shoot yourself and act scary. I'm scared. No! I'm scared. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like I'm fainting. They do, however, on again. They do, however, hold festival. Again, they do, however, hold festivals in order again to honor their yeah. Again, they do, however, hold festivals to hold to oh. Okay. Again. Okay. Again. <laughs> Hey, gente, beleza? Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome to top 10 false cognates in Portuguese. Puxar, empurrar. To pull, to push. I always get confused when I get to a door and it's written puxar or to push because I never remember if it's to puxar, to pull or empurrar, to push. É para puxar ou empurrar? Is it for pull or to push? Assistir, ajudar. To watch, to assist. You can actually use this word assistir to mean assist, but we usually use this to mean watch. Eu estou assistindo o filme. I'm watching a movie. Oh, great. Na verdade, atualmente. Actually, nowadays. So many people get confused with actually because they think it means atualmente or nowadays currently in Portuguese, but it means na verdade. Na verdade, eu não quis dizer isso. Actually, I didn't mean to say that. Colégio, faculdade, school, college. So you might confuse college with colégio, but we use the word colégio to mean private schools or more specifically high schools. Eu fui pro colégio hoje. I went to school today. Ele já está na faculdade. He's already at college. Esquisito, requintado. Weird, exquisite. So if you just come to Brazil and say, Mmm, que esquisito! People will be like, Wow, you're criticizing my food because it means, Mmm, that's weird, not Mmm, that's rich, or that's tasty. So you could say, Nossa, que esquisito! Eu tinha deixado aqui. Well, that's weird. I had left it here. Esse é um prato muito requintado. This is a very exquisite dish. Idioma, expressão idiomática, language, idiom. That's a pretty easy way to get confused because idiom means expressão idiomática and not idioma, which means language. Eu sei muitas expressões idiomáticas nesse idioma. I know many idioms in this language. Pretender, fingir. To intend, to pretend. These two words sound very similar, pretender and to pretend, but they are totally different. Pretender means to intend. Eu pretendo ir ao Brasil ano que vem. I intend to go to Brazil next year. Ele está fingindo que está ajudando. He's just pretending he's helping. Lanche, almoço. Snack, lunch. So this is actually one of the first false cognates that I learned when I was in English school because my teacher just asked me, what did you have for lunch? And I was like, no, I didn't have lunch yet. I'm just, you know, it's just two o'clock. I just had uh, how do you say that in English? Oh, that's lunch. Yeah, almoço. It's lunch. And 
lunch in Portuguese is snack. So I was saying, I didn't have any snack yet, but I thought, you know, I got confused. Ela nunca almoça e sempre toma lanche. She never has lunch and always eats snacks. Parentes, pais. Relative, parents. Yeah, that's a very confusing one. You can say, os meus parentes vão vir hoje. My relatives are coming today. Os meus pais não vieram. My parents didn't come. Realizar, perceber. To carry out, to realize. So this is a very tricky two verbs. Realizar and realize. Nós vamos realizar uma festa semana que vem. We are carrying out a party next week. Eu não percebi que eu estava errado. I didn't realize I was wrong. In the end, o fim, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and didn't get confused. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions. See you next time. Ciao! Hi! Welcome to Introduction to Portuguese. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Anna. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Portuguese writing. Portuguese uses the exact same alphabet as English, comprised of 26 letters. A, B, K. Let's listen to the names of the letters in Portuguese. A, B, C. The letters K, W, and Y were recently recognized as part of the official Portuguese alphabet. They are only used in personal names, foreign loanwords, and derivatives, including words from indigenous Brazilian languages. The letter Y is read like the vowel I. Yaksoba, shoyu, yanomami. The letter W may vary. It may be read like the vowel U or like the consonant V. It usually follows the pronunciation of the language of origin. Washington, Wagner, Volkswagen. And the letter K is read just like in English. Cart, Yakisoba, Kung Fu, Kantiano. The Portuguese alphabet is phonetic, which means letters represent certain sounds alone and certain sounds when combined, just like most Western languages. Portuguese, like English, uses digraphs, which are pairs of letters representing a single sound, different from their components alone but they're not included in the alphabet. For instance, the letter C sounds like this, casa, or like this, cinto. When paired with H, forming the digraph CH, we have the sound, chocolate. So, as you can see, while Portuguese is largely pronounced as it's written, some letter combinations will produce digraphs that you will need to look out for. Diacritics are little marks that are added to the letters to indicate some alteration on the quality of the original letter. It usually indicates a pronunciation aspect. While in English, they appear more in names and loan words, such as fiancé, in Portuguese, they are very common. There are five diacritics with different uses in Portuguese. They can indicate stressed vowels and pronunciation aspects in consonants and vowels, they can also be used to differentiate some homographs or to mark grammar phenomena. Let's see what they are. In Portuguese, the acute accent is used to indicate a stressed vowel in a word. Fácil, árvore, alguém. As you see, all the stressed vowels in these words are marked with the acute accent. Vowels with the acute accent will be stressed and pronounced with open pronunciation. Avó. This word means grandmother. If said with a closed vowel, it would mean grandfather. And with no accent at all, avo. The stressed vowel now is the first one. This word is used to express fractions. So, if this word is not correctly marked, you don't know how to pronounce the last vowel properly. Specifically in this case, with an incorrect pronunciation, it would have a different meaning. As we saw in the last example, circumflexes mark when vowels are pronounced with closed pronunciation. 
Portuguese. Circumflexes are also used to differentiate homographs. Homographs are words that are written in the same way but with different meanings. Vem, vem, pode, pode. As you see, this mark may or may not refer to the vowel sound in such cases. The grave accent is related to a grammar phenomenon, the crassus. The crassus is a contraction of a feminine article with a preposition. Fui a plus a cidade. Verb, preposition, article, object. Fui a cidade. The grave accent in Portuguese is never a pronunciation mark, so it would never alter how a vowel, syllable, or word sounds. To indicate nasal vowels, the tilde is used. Pão. Note that although the nasal vowel marked with tilde is commonly stressed, the stressed quality is not part of what the tilde means. Like in this case, sotão. The stressed vowel is marked by an acute accent, indicate, indicating also the open vowel pronunciation even though the tilde is present. The cedilla is the only diacritic used on consonants in Portuguese. More specifically, it is only used on the letter C, hence the Portuguese name. Cecidilha. C, when paired with vowels A, O, and U, sounds like the English K. Casa, acordo, óculos. Whenever the cedilha is put before these vowels, it will sound like the English S. Calçada, açougue, açúcar. Incerto, cinto. So the cedilha will never be there in these cases with I and E. Also, the cedilha is never the first letter in a word. The sigilia has been historically replaced by the letter S in those cases, so there is no capital. Se sigilia. Saúde. Suco. Great! Let's move on to the next section. Capitalization rules in English and in Portuguese are mostly the same. For instance, the first letter in a sentence is always capitalized, just like people's names and nations. Still, there are some significant differences between capitalization in English and in Portuguese. Let's focus on some of these. Portuguese doesn't capitalize the pronoun eu. That is the equivalent to the pronoun I in English, which is always capitalized. Claro, eu concordo. Nationalities and regional adjectives aren't capitalized in Portuguese. The same goes for a language name. Ela é brasileira e fala português. Days of the week and months are also never capitalized. A reunião será nesta quarta-feira. Normalmente, saio de férias em julho. In titles of works, such as books and movies, only the first letter is capitalized, unless there's a personal name in it. Capitã de Areia. Memórias póstumas de Brás Cubas. These are some of the capitalization rules in Portuguese that differ from those in English. Most of the other rules are the same. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that the Portuguese alphabet is identical to the one used in English and also has digraphs. You learned that acute accents indicate both stressed and open vowels, circumflexes indicate closed vowels, the grave accent always indicates crassus and is not a phonetical mark. The tilde is used to mark nasal vowels, and the cedilla gives an S sound to the letter C. Also, you learned the main differences in capitalization Portuguese has when compared to English. Hi everyone! Do you know the 1,000 most useful phrases in Portuguese? In this lesson, you'll be able to know all of them, so sit back, relax, and have a cup of tea as you listen and learn. Onde fica o banheiro? Com licença. Fantástico. Eu tenho uma reserva. Quanto custa este daqui? Que é isso? Obrigado. Verdade? 
Você poderia me dar um desconto? O Wi-Fi é gratuito? Você pode trazer a conta? Você tem alguma sugestão? Eu posso experimentar? You just learned the 1,000 most useful phrases in Portuguese. And, if you're interested in learning more, try learning the core 2,000 word list. With this, you'll understand 95% of the language, and best of all, this is not a joke. Check out the description below and go to portuguesepod101.com now. See you next time. Hum, verão no Brasil. E aí, gente, tudo bom? Hello, Maria. Welcome to another top Portuguese words. Today's topic is top 10 things to do in the summer in Brazil. As top coisas para fazer no Brasil durante o verão. Viajar para o exterior. To travel abroad. Ah, queria tanto viajar para o exterior, mas vou precisar juntar mais dinheiro primeiro. Oh, I wish I could travel abroad, but I'll have to save more money first. Brazil is a country that is very far from other countries, so besides the countries that border Brazil, it's kind of expensive and far to travel to them. But on the other side, for example, if you're just melting in Brazilian summer, you can just go to Europe and it's gonna be winter, so you can see snow and you can really feel cold as we don't have in Brazil. Relaxar na praia. To relax at the beach. Nada melhor do que relaxar na praia com a família. Nothing better than relaxing at the beach with the family. Ah, relaxar. Eu quero relaxar hoje. I wanna relax today. Estudar português com a PortuguesePod101.com To learn Portuguese with PortuguesePod101.com Faz um mês que estou estudando português no PortuguesePod101.com e estou adorando. I've been studying Portuguese with PortuguesePod101.com for a month and I'm loving it. You don't only need to stay home to study with PortuguesePod101.com because you also have a lot of lessons that you can download on your smartphone or your tablet and just take them with you wherever you go. It's great. Aprender a cozinhar comida típica brasileira. To learn to cook Brazilian food. Vou aprender a cozinhar comida típica brasileira com a minha tia. Ela cozinha super bem. I'm going to learn to cook Brazilian food with my aunt. She cooks very well. That's a great plan for summer vacations. I really like to cook and I really like to eat as well. For example, coxinha, feijoada, moqueca, brigadeiro, bolo de cenoura. There's so many things. <laughs> If you know how to cook any Brazilian foods, let us know in the comments, okay? Fazer um churrasco. To have a barbecue. Vamos fazer um churrasco esse final de semana. Você está convidada. We are having a barbecue this weekend and you are invited to join us. Mmm, churrasco. Brazilians really love to cook churrascos during the weekend and they invite a lot of friends and each person would bring a dish or a piece of meat so they can just share everything between everyone. And if you haven't tried it yet, you can also go to a churrascaria or a Brazilian steakhouse to try it. Festejar a noite inteira. To party all night. Sábado é o dia perfeito para festejar a noite inteira com os amigos. Saturday is the perfect day for partying all night with friends. Brazilians really like to party, so parties in Brazil usually have a time to start, but they never have a time to end. And they usually party all night, festejam a noite toda. Pegar um bronzeado. To get a tan. Quero pegar um super bronzeado nessas férias. I want to get a great tan on this vacation. Brazilians really, really like to get tan, especially women. They like to have marquinha de bikini, that is the bikini line. So when they go back to work, it looks like they went to the beach and they didn't stay at home during summer vacations. Fazer caminhadas. To go hiking. Adoro fazer caminhadas. É muito relaxante. I love to go hiking. It's very relaxing. If you're a hiking fan, there are so many beautiful places to go in Brazil. For example, the Chapada dos Viadeiros or even the Sugarloaf Mountain in Rio. It has a trail that you can go by walk. It's very hard, but 
I never tried it before. <laughs> But maybe if you're a hiking fan, you'll love it. Tomar sorvete na sorveteria. To eat ice cream at the ice cream shop. Que calor! Vamos tomar sorvete naquela sorveteria que vimos ontem? It's so hot. Let's eat an ice cream at that ice cream shop that we saw yesterday. There are many, many ice cream shops everywhere you go in Brazil because it's always so hot. So you can get an ice cream or sorvete or picolé, that is the popsicle. And they're also my favorite ones, that are the ones by Kilo, where you wait your plate after you serve with all the kinds of ice cream you want and all the, the toppings that you want. Yeah, so good. Se divertir com os amigos. To have fun with friends. O que eu mais gosto de fazer é sair para me divertir com as meninas. What I like the most is to go out and have fun with the girls. You can say se divertir com os amigos, with the friends, or com as meninas, with the girls, or com os meninos, with the boys. It's kind of a trend now, but we have the rolezinho, that is group of friends, like usually very young people, that go to the mall and they just hang around like all afternoon on a Saturday, driving the managers crazy. <laughs> Okay, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at portuguesepod101.com. Bom dia, gente, tudo bom? Paloma here. Welcome to Talk Portuguese Words. Today's topic is how to respond to how are you? Tudo bem? How are you? Tudo bem? How are you? I think you already know that tudo bem can be the question and also the answer. Tudo bem? Tudo bem. Oi, tudo bem? Tudo bem. E você? E aí, beleza? Hey, what's up? E aí, beleza? Hey, what's up? Beleza means beauty, but in this case I think it means more like everything's beautiful with you. You can also answer beleza. This is very casual, so it's best to avoid it in a more formal or business situation. E você? And you? E você? And you? Of course, if someone asks you, E aí, beleza? Or tudo bem? It's common courtesy to also ask them, E você? And you? Tudo ótimo. Everything is great. Tudo ótimo. Everything is great. If you don't want to answer the same way as the question, Tudo bem? Tudo bem. You can also say, Tudo ótimo. Everything's great. Eu estou bem. I'm fine. Eu estou bem. I'm fine. That's another option. Bem means well in Portuguese or fine. Eu estou bem. Eu estou bem também. I'm fine too. Eu estou bem também. I'm fine too. So if you say, Eu estou bem. E você? The person can answer, Eu estou bem também. I'm also fine. Então tá bom. Then it's all good. It's very common to say after all these steps, Então tá bom. Then it's all good. Oi, tudo bom? Tudo bem, e você? Tudo bem. Ah, então tá bom. Eu estou me sentindo mal. I'm feeling bad. Tudo bem? Não, estou me sentindo mal. No, I'm feeling bad. Maybe I ate something that wasn't good. Eu estou ótima. I'm great. Oi, tudo bom? Como você tá? How are you? Eu estou ótima. I'm great. Obrigada por perguntar. Thank you for asking. If you want to be very polite, you can say Obrigada por perguntar or Obrigado por perguntar. Thank you for asking. The end. That's it for today. Tudo bem com você? How are you? Let us know in the comments below. See you next time. Bye bye. Welcome to Introduction to Portuguese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Anna. In this lesson, we'll focus on teaching you the most useful Portuguese words and phrases for absolute beginners. Make sure you are repeating the words out loud after I say the examples. Are you ready? Let's get started. The best phrase to learn when studying a new language is one that expresses gratitude and appreciation. If you had to learn only a single phrase, this would be it. We taught you this word in the first lesson of the series. 
Do you remember what it was? Obrigado. Obrigada. It means thank you. Say obrigado if you're a male. Or obrigada if you're a female. Obrigado. Obrigada. Keep repeating after Ana until you get it. Obrigado. Obrigada. Your turn. Obrigado. Obrigada. Obrigado. Obrigada. Do you remember how we talked about pronunciation of the letter R here in lesson two? Don't pronounce it like an English R. Don't roll your tongue. Listen to how Anna is pronouncing this sound. Ri. Think of the quick tapping motion your tongue makes as it strikes the top gum ridge in words like ladder or butter. Ri. Ri. Altogether, it's... Obrigado. Obrigada. Okay, one last time. Obrigado. Obrigada. Okay, the next phrase we'll teach you is perhaps the second most useful phrase of all. It's to excuse yourself. Com licença. It means excuse me. Com licença. Use this phrase when you want to grab someone's attention or when you brush by someone in the streets. Com licença. If you recall, we talked about nasal vowels in lesson two, too. Like this one. N. To pronounce it, you need to lower your soft palate and the back of your tongue, unblocking the nasal passage and allowing air to pass through the nasal cavity and out through the nose. Imagine you're humming with your mouth open and add the E vowel sound to it. N. Now you try. N. Again. N. Altogether, it's... Com licença. On a daily basis, Brazilians tend to drop the first word, saying simply... Licença. And what about showing forgiveness? This is very important in any country. In Brazilian Portuguese, the most common way to say, I'm sorry, is... Me desculpe. On a daily basis, people often drop the pronoun me, saying just... Desculpe. But it can also be said... Me desculpa, or simply desculpa. Both ways are correct. Note that this variation is due to conjugation aspects, and it's not gender related. You can say both ways regardless of your gender. Let's listen. Me desculpe, desculpa. It's very useful when you bump into someone when taking the busy subway lines of Sao Paulo. Let's practice a little. Me desculpe. Now you try. Me desculpe. Now let's try the variation. Desculpa. Desculpa. One last time. Desculpa. Great. Now you can say thank you, excuse me, and I'm sorry in Portuguese. Let's move on. Asking where something is is an incredibly important and useful phrase to learn. You're going to need this when asking where the bathroom, the subway station, the bus stop, or where the hotel is. To ask where something is, you should say, onde fica? Then you should verify the gender of the location you want to know about. So you can place the proper article, feminine, a, or masculine, o. Onde fica a, o? Lastly, add the location. If you want to know where the bathroom is, you should say, Onde fica o banheiro? The word for bathroom in Portuguese is a masculine gender. So, like Anna said, we put the definite masculine article O before the noun. Onde fica o banheiro? For the subway station, it'll be, Onde fica o metrô? And so on. Just remember the gender to use the correct article. Let's see some vocabulary that you can use in this sentence. Here are some of the most common words you'll need to learn. Banheiro. Bathroom. Banheiro. Onde fica o banheiro? Next. Metro. Subway. 
metrô. Onde fica o metrô? If you ask this question, they'll direct you to the closest subway station. If you'd like to ask where a specific station is, simply place the name of the station after subway. Onde fica o metrô Consolação? Or you can just say station instead of subway. Onde fica a estação Consolação? Next. Hotel. Hotel. See that in Portuguese, H as the first letter is always silent, except for specific foreign loanwords. Hotel. Onde fica o hotel? For a specific hotel, do the same as before. Just place the name after hotel. Hotel. Hotel Intercontinental. Onde fica o Hotel Intercontinental? Next. Padaria. Bakery. Bakeries, especially in São Paulo, are really popular. There are a lot of bakeries in the city, and they usually are a blend of a bakery, a deli, a coffee shop, a restaurant, and a pizza parlor, all in one place. Often, even a mini market as well, and sometimes acting as a bar at night. There are enormous franchise bakeries as well as smaller family ones. So knowing this is extremely useful, especially in Sao Paulo. Okay, so how do we ask where the bakery is? Onde fica a padaria? You can substitute almost anything and simply add Onde fica o a to ask where something is in Portuguese. In this final lesson, you learned how to say thank you, excuse me, I'm sorry, and to ask where something is in Portuguese. And in this series, we introduce you to the basics of Portuguese pronunciation, grammar, writing, and more. Let's conclude with some parting advice from Ana and listen to some of her tips on how to learn Portuguese from a native Brazilian perspective. The best way to learn Portuguese, particularly if you want to improve your communication skills, is to watch and study contemporary Brazilian videos, like soap operas and news programs. That way you can learn expressions and the peculiarities of pronunciation that you can't learn from regular grammar books and methods. A great way to learn, which is also pleasant, is studying with MPB, Brazilian Popular Music. Brazil is famous for its unique type of music, and the lyrics usually mix formal and informal Portuguese in a rich and poetic way. You can increase your vocabulary while enjoying good music and learning more about the country's culture and history. A big mistake I see learners make is not asking native speakers for help with the language. Brazilians are in general very warm and receptive, and they want to be polite, so they won't correct your grammar or pronunciation. They're usually flattered and happy to see the effort in Portuguese, so they reciprocate with doing their best to understand foreigners and not paying attention to their mistakes. Because of that, a lot of learners end up plateauing in their Portuguese by getting too comfortable. Don't do that. Ask your Brazilian friends and colleagues to help and correct you. Tell them it will not offend you. On the contrary, it will make you very happy. If you are not in Brazil, a tip is to browse the web for Brazilians who are willing to be your friends. It shouldn't be difficult. Practice your pronunciation a lot and try your best to remember noun genders. Make a list if you need. It's very common for learners to mix the genders up, as there is no exact rule to determine when a noun is masculine or feminine. Watching contemporary videos, such as our videos here at Portuguese Pod 101, we will ensure that you are learning real, applicable Portuguese in the fastest and most effective way. You've reached the end of this course, Introduction to Portuguese, but it's only the beginning of your journey to Portuguese fluency. Where do you go from here? Try our Portuguese in 3 Minutes series, where we teach you beginner vocabulary and even more useful phrases. Or check out any of our other video series. We have many different categories for you to choose from. 
Good luck as you continue learning Portuguese, and I'll see you in another video. Bye! Bye! E aí, galera, beleza? Paloma here. Welcome to another Talk Portuguese Words. Today's topic is 20 travel phrases you should know. Travel, viajar. Você pode me ver um mapa? Could you get me a map? Você pode me ver um mapa? Could you get me a map? Well, nowadays everyone has cell phone and we have maps on it, so it's not that useful anymore. But sometimes in some smaller cities it's very useful to have a map. So just remember that word, mapa, is not the hard, right? Você fala inglês? Do you speak English? Você fala inglês? Do you speak English? Well, this is kind of a survival phrase, especially if you don't speak Portuguese very well, you should know that one. So you can, you know, just approach everyone and just ask them, Você fala inglês? Você fala inglês? Well, if you speak another language, you can also ask, just change English for that language, right? Você fala inglês? Você fala francês? Você fala japonês? And hopefully someone will speak the language you need. Tem algum ônibus que vai do aeroporto até a cidade? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Tem algum ônibus que vai do aeroporto até a cidade? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? In most airports, there will probably be a bus that goes from the airport to the city. So just ask information or um guardinha, like a security guard. Yeah, we love to ask the guardinhas. Moço, excuse me, sir. Moço, com licença. Wi-Fi é gratuito? Is the Wi-Fi free? O Wi-Fi é gratuito? Is the Wi-Fi free? You can also say, o Wi-Fi é grátis? In most restaurants, hotels, and everywhere you go, they will have a Wi-Fi. So, sometimes the Wi-Fi is free, but they still have a password. So, you can ask, qual é a senha do Wi-Fi? What is the Wi-Fi password? Você tem um quarto vago para hoje? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Você tem um quarto vago para hoje? Do you have any vacancies tonight? I prefer to book for a room before going to the city, but many people prefer to just go to the place they want to go and there they find the hotel. Well, if you do that, then you have to ask, tem algum quarto para hoje à noite? Or tem algum quarto vago para hoje à noite? Eu poderia me mudar para outro quarto? Could I move to a different room? Eu poderia me mudar para outro quarto? Could I move to a different room? Well, there are many reasons why you want to change your room. Maybe it's too noisy, barulhento, or something is broken, quebrado. So you can just go complain, this is broken, or it's too noisy. Posso me mudar para outro quarto? Eu tenho uma reserva. I have a reservation. Eu tenho uma reserva. I have a reservation. Well, you can use this at hotels or restaurants. If you want to be more specific, you can say, Eu tenho uma reserva no nome de... I have a reservation under the name of... Eu tenho uma reserva no nome de Paloma. Você pode trazer o cardápio, por favor? Could you bring the menu, please? Você pode trazer o cardápio, por favor? Could you bring the menu, please? Okay, this is very useful because many countries, they also use the word menu, similar to the English. But in Brazil, we mostly use the word cardápio. So don't forget it. If you say menu, they probably understand, but it's much more common to say cardápio. Você tem alguma sugestão? Do you have any recommendations? Você tem alguma sugestão? Do you have any recommendations? So you can ask that to the waiter, the waitress, or maybe the tour guide. You can also say like, I like meat. Do you have any recommendations? Eu gosto de carne. Você tem alguma sugestão? Você pode trazer a conta? Could I have the check? Você pode trazer a conta? Can I have the check? So, você pode trazer a conta literally means can you bring me the bill? But, well, in English, it's more common to say, can I have the check, maybe? You can also say just, a conta, por favor, the check, please. Eu sou alérgico a amendoim. I'm allergic to peanuts. Eu sou alérgico a amendoim. I'm allergic to peanuts. 
I'm so lucky I'm not allergic to anything, so I can just order whatever I want. Maybe I won't like it, but at least it won't be bad for me. If you're allergic to something, make sure to know that word in Portuguese. If you don't know that word, you can just post in the comments below and we'll make sure to answer you. Uma água, por favor. Water, please. Uma água, por favor. Water, please. Usually when you order water in Brazil, they come in bottles, they don't come in glasses. And they are usually água mineral, not água com gas, which would be sparkling water. So if you just want normal, natural water, you can just say água mineral. Quanto custa este daqui? How much is this? Quanto custa este daqui? How much is this? So if you're in a store looking at things, you can just say, Oh, I like that one. Quanto custa este daqui? How much is this? Eu quero 10 desses. I'd like 10 of this. Eu quero 10 desses. I'd like 10 of this. So if you went to the store and you asked, Quanto custa este daqui? And you liked it? You can just say, Eu vou levar 10 desses. I'm gonna take 10 of this. Eu quero este daqui. I'd like this one. Eu quero este daqui. I'd like this one. If you want to be very specific, you can say Eu quero este daqui. I'd like this one. If you want that one, you would say Eu quero aquele dali. Tem desconto? Is there a discount? Tem desconto? Is there a discount? So it's very common to ask for discounts in Brazil. Uh, you can also say, tem desconto no dinheiro? Is there a discount in cash? Especially if you're buying a lot of merchandise, you can ask that. Of course, you're not going to ask in a supermarket or a chain store, but if it's like a local business, it's more common to give a discount. Maybe in touristic areas, not that common, but, well, you should try, right? As we say in Brazil, não custa nada. Doesn't cost anything. At the most, your answer is gonna be no, no, não tem desconto. Vocês aceitam cartão de crédito? Do you take credit card? Vocês aceitam cartão de crédito? Do you take credit card? Nowadays, you can pay by credit card everywhere. Uh, it's very, very hard to find a place that doesn't accept credit card. Like, it's crazy. Even if you go, for example, to the beach, there's like the guy selling earrings and he's gonna have his credit card machine so you can pay with credit card. I'm not kidding, yeah. Onde fica rodoviária? Where's the bus terminal? Onde fica rodoviária? Where's the bus terminal? You can say rodoviária or terminal rodoviário, but it's much more common just to say rodoviária. Quanto é a passagem? What's the fare? Quanto é a passagem? What's the fare? You can use the question at the rodoviária, the bus terminal, for example, for a long distance bus, but you can also use it for a local bus. For example, if you don't see the price that is usually in the front of the bus, you can just ask the driver, motorista, or cobrador, você poderia parar em... Or, você poderia me avisar? But first, you have to ask. Quanto é a passagem? Quanto é a tarifa? Você pode tirar uma foto de mim, por favor? Could you take a picture of me, please? Você pode tirar uma foto de mim, por favor? Can you take a picture of me, please? Most people nowadays don't leave their home without their selfie stick, which in Portuguese is pau de selfie. Um, but if you don't have your pau de selfie, you can just ask someone. Você pode tirar uma foto de mim, por favor? Or, você pode tirar uma foto de nós, por favor? Can you take our picture, please? Yeah, I'm talking with my ghost friend here. The end! That's all for today. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let us know which other words or sentences you need to know before traveling to Brazil. See you next time. Ciao, ciao! Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at portuguesepod101.com. You are at a bus terminal where you're heading to the police office to retrieve a lost passport. According to a postcard you received from the police office, 
What are the things that you need to provide to the police? What are the things that you need to provide to the police? The postcard says that you need to pay a small fee. Pagar uma pequena taxa. E aí, gente? Beleza? Paloma here. Welcome to another Top Portuguese Words. Today's topic is... Tem must know math words. Ooh, matemática, math. Did you like matemática when you were a kid or now when you're study? Let us know. Dúzia, dozen. Dúzia, dozen. Eu comprei uma dúzia de banana na feira ontem. I bought a dozen banana at the farmer's market yesterday. It's very common to use dúzia or dozen in Brazil, especially at the feira. The farmer's market, which happens like every day of the week, usually in the morning, in a certain place of each city. For example, bananas we buy by the dozen. What else? Especially bananas, I don't know why. Número. Number. Número. Number. Para ser engenheiro, você precisa gostar de números. To be an engineer, you need to like numbers. Well, that's true. I like numbers, but not that much to become an engineer, so... Well, I just like math, but not, you know, they've calculating all day. <laughs> you can also say número to ask someone else's phone. Você pode me passar o seu número? Can you give me your number or can you give me your phone number? Metade. Half. Metade. Half. Está tudo pela metade do preço. Everything is half the price. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's like a girl's dream to go to a store e tudo está pela metade do preço. Everything is half the price. Por cento. Percent. Por cento. Percent. Essa calça tem 30% de desconto. These pants are 30% off. This is how we say Percent off in Portuguese, the number 30% percent de desconto of discount. Par, even, par, even. Os números pares são 2, 4, 6, 8. The even numbers are 2, 4, 6, 8. Par also means pair, so a pair of shoes, um par de sapatos. But it means even. Número par. Even number. Ímpar. Odd. Ímpar. Odd. Os números ímpares são 1, 3, 5, 7. The odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7. So when you're trying to decide something, you can play para o ímpar, which in English is odd or even. Para o ímpar. There is also junk in pop, but it's like from Japanese origin. Mais, plus, mais, plus. Sete mais cinco é igual a doze. Seven plus five equals twelve. Well, as I'm sure you know, mais also means more. So you can say, eu quero mais, I want more. Um mais um é dois. One plus one is two. O sinal de mais, the plus sign. Menos, minus, menos, minus. 
nós usamos o sinal de menos para fazer uma subtração. We use the minus sign to do subtraction. You know that phrase, more is less? In Portuguese, that would be mais é menos. So, menos also means less. And mais, more. Don't forget it. Vezes, times. Vezes, times. Duas vezes é a mesma coisa que o dobro. Two times is the same as double. Especially if you just start learning Portuguese, sometimes it can be hard to remember those words. Dobro, triplo, quadruplo, quintuplo. So you can just say duas vezes, três vezes, quatro vezes, which is much easier to remember. Dividir, to divide. Dividir, to divide. Preciso dividir essa torta em dez pedaços. I need to divide this tart in ten pieces. Dividir can also mean share, so you can say Eu vou dividir o meu lanche com você. I can share my, my snack with you. Or dividir to divide. Dividir um pedaço de pão. To divide a piece of bread, a loaf of bread. Ok, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for listening. Don't forget to let us know in the comments below which were your favorite subjects at school. See you next time. Até a próxima. Tchau! You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now! Boa tarde, galera! Tudo bom? Paloma here. Welcome to another Top Portuguese Words. Today's theme is Top 10 Must Know Vocabulary for the Restaurant. Mm. Um, garçom, waiter. Garçom, waiter. Queria fazer o pedido, mas o garçom tá demorando tanto. I'd like to order, but the waiter is taking so long to serve us. If it is a female, that would be garçonete. You can also use the words moço or moça to call their attentions. For example, o moço or garçom. Both are okay. Cardápio. Menu. Cardápio. Menu. Por favor, você pode me trazer o cardápio? Can you bring me the menu, please? You can say before that. Moço, garçom, você pode trazer o cardápio, por favor? Prato feito, PF. Set meal. Hum, o que, que eu como hoje? Acho que vou pedir um PF que sai mais barato. Hum, what should I eat today? I think I will order a set meal, since it's cheaper. Prato feito or set meal is very common in Brazil, especially, for example, in the restaurants near business or schools, which is like a set plate, so you can just eat quickly and go to your work or school. But it's used at restaurants 
For example, if you go to McDonald's, we don't order a PF or prato feito. It's usually called combo. Pratos feitos usually have like rice, beans, kind of protein, usually beef, and a salad. It's all good. Um PF. Bem passado. Well done. Bem passado. Well done. Gostaria da carne bem passada, por favor. I'd like the steak well done, please. Well, the opposite of bem passada would be mal passada. So if you wanted where, you would say mal passada, por favor. Acompanhamentos. Side dishes. Acompanhamentos. Side dishes. Nossa, tem tanta opção de acompanhamentos que eu nem sei o que pedir. Well, there are so many side dishes options that I can't decide what to order. What is your favorite side dish? I like puré de batata, mashed potatoes, mm, what else? Batata frita, of course, french fries, arroz grega, which is like a Greek rice, which is a rice with a lot of vegetables. Yeah, it's also very good. Água, water. Água, water. Pode me trazer uma água com gás, por favor? Could you bring me a sparkling water, please? Okay, so just remember that if you say just água, they'll probably bring you normal water. And if you say água com gás, that would be sparkling water. Por quilo, by kilo. Por quilo, by kilo. Como eu como pouco, eu prefiro ir no restaurante por quilo. Since I don't eat much, I prefer to go to a per kilo restaurant. So per kilo restaurants are very common in Brazil. It's a kind of buffet. And you just go and grab whatever you want to eat. And then you're going to weight your plate. And whatever is the weight is going to be how much you pay for it. So if you eat a lot, usually it's not a good deal. But if you eat very little, it's usually a good deal. Because it's not going to pay for a full set menu if you don't eat everything. So you can just grab whatever you want. For example, if you're on a diet and you are hanging out with your friends and you're just going to eat some salad, it's very good because you don't need to order, you know, a whole piece of meat and don't need it. You can just grab your salad and weigh it and eat it. Restaurante por quilo. Another option would be restaurante self-service, which you pay a price and then you can just eat as much as you want at the buffet. Restaurante. Restaurant. Restaurante. Restaurant. Conheça um restaurante de comida italiana ótimo por aqui. Você vai adorar. I know a great Italian restaurant around here. You love it. So we have restaurantes, which are restaurants. We also have lanchonete, which are like a snack restaurant. Um, and then we have like a specific places. Pizzaria, pizza restaurant. Um, pastelaria, a restaurant that only serves pastel. Churrascaria. Mm -hmm. which only serves churrasco or Brazilian barbecue. Delicioso. Delicious. Delicioso. Delicious. Esse pudim tá delicioso. Acho que vou pedir mais um pedaço. This pudding is delicious. I think I'll order another one. Hum, tá delicioso. Porque nosso sei tá maravilhoso. It's marvelous. Conta. Bill. Conta, bill. Pode trazer a conta, por favor? Can I have the bill, please? Or can you bring me the bill, please? Bill can be used at the restaurant bill, but you can also use it for other types of bills. For example, conta de luz, the electricity bill, conta de água, the water bill, conta de gas, maybe, gas bill. There are so many contas, so many bills. <laughs> Okay, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And let us know in the comments what is your favorite type of Brazilian restaurants. And don't forget to subscribe to PortuguesePod101.com and also to our YouTube channel. See you next time. Ciao, ciao. Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at PortuguesePod101.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Paloma from PortuguesePod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Portuguese? In 
this lesson, you learn three different ways to say I love you and all about Valentine's Day in Brazil. Let's start with the most common phrase. Eu te amo. Eu te amo. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should only use it when you're confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Eu te adoro. Eu te adoro. It literally means I adore you, but it's how we express we like someone a lot. What if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone? Here's the phrase for you. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. It means words cannot describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Portuguese. And here's another phrase to learn. In Brazil, Valentine's Day is celebrated on the 12th of June and it's called Dia dos Namorados. Dia dos namorados. It means Lover's Day. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. Eu te amo. Eu te amo. I adore you. I like you a lot. Eu te adoro. Eu te adoro. Words cannot describe my love for you. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Lover's Day Dia dos Namorados Dia dos Namorados Well done! Here's a fun fact! Did you know that Dia dos Namorados is not only for lovers? Not only couples. Singles also enjoy this day as the nightclubs and theaters open special events for the singles looking for love. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Portuguese and about Valentine's Day in Brazil. Also, don't forget to download your free cheat sheet on how to be a good lover in Brazil, including words for romance, compliments and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to portuguesepod101.com now. I'll see you next time. Ciao! Hoje é dia dos namorados. Com você. Hoje é dia dos namorados. Você I have never been a DJ, so... <laughs> e aí, gente, tudo bom? Paloma here. Welcome to another Top Portuguese Words. Today's topic is... Top 10 phrases tourists should never use. Que nojo! Disgusting! Que nojo! Disgusting! Nojo means disgust, and nojento is the adjective, disgusting. So you can say que nojo or que nojento. O meu país é muito melhor do que o seu. My country is much better than yours. O meu país é muito melhor que o seu. My country is much better than yours. No, instead of saying that, you should always say eu amo o seu país. I love your country. Eu preferia estar na minha casa. I'd rather be back home. 
Eu preferia estar na minha casa. I'd rather be back home. Well, if you're saying that, maybe it's just better to stay at home. <laughs> Instead of this sentence, you should say, Eu não quero mais voltar para casa. I don't want to go home anymore. Cala a boca. Shut up. Cala a boca. Shut up. Cala a boca. Actually, you shouldn't use this sentence in your country or in another country or anywhere. Instead, you can say, Eu acho português muito bonito. I think Portuguese is very beautiful. Eu não estou muito interessado na sua cultura. I'm not very interested in your culture. Eu não estou muito interessado na sua cultura. I'm not very interested in your culture. Eu não estou muito interessado na sua cultura. Instead, you can say, a sua cultura é fascinante. Your culture is fascinating. Não gosto de conhecer gente nova. I don't like meeting new people. Não gosto de conhecer gente nova. I don't like meeting new people. Não gosto de conhecer gente nova. No, instead of the sentence, say Eu adoro fazer novas amizades. I love to make new friendships. Vamos comer no McDonald's mesmo. Let's just eat at McDonald's. Vamos comer no McDonald's mesmo. Let's just eat at McDonald's. That is so sad to go to another country and have so many flavorful foods to try and just eat McDonald's. Instead, you should say, What is the typical food in here? Qual é a comida típica daqui? Qual é a comida típica daqui? Isso é horrível. This is awful. Isso é horrível. This is awful. To make the sentence positive, you can say, Isso é maravilhoso. This is wonderful. Isso é maravilhoso. Que tonto. How stupid. Que tonto. How stupid. Que tonto. You can be more polite and just say, Que diferente. That's different. Vocês não são civilizados. You people are uncivilized. Vocês não são civilizados. You people are uncivilized. Well, that's like the worst thing you can say to anyone, right? Okay, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching and let us know in the comments what other phrases you think we shouldn't use while in a foreign country. Até mais! Até a próxima! Tchau! Hi everyone, welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is the 10 habits of highly effective language learners. So, what do successful language learners, people who set language goals and actually hit them, do differently? And are you doing any of these things already? Let's get into it. You'll discover 10 powerful habits and how to apply them. I'll give you specific step-by-step -step examples. You can use these whether you're learning with our program or any other resource, a textbook, an app, or some audio program. Let's start with the first and most important one. Habit number one, set small, measurable goals with deadlines. Why small goals? Well, say for example, you set big, vague goals, like I wanna be fluent someday, and maybe you buy a textbook, you read the first chapter, then you start wondering if you're getting any better. You start worrying you'll never be fluent, and you give up. If you do this, you need to start setting small, measurable goals. For example, learn 100 words in a month or speak one minute of conversation, or do 30 of our audio lessons in one month. Deadline, November 30th. Okay, habit number two, create a routine, because your routine is what will bring your goals to reality. This goes back to the first habit. Again, if you set a goal like doing 30 lessons in one month, 
you need to do one lesson a day and spend 15 minutes studying. Now you have a routine to stick to. One lesson a day, 15 minutes. Next, decide when and where you'll do it. Why? So you can make time. Make a mental note that this time is language time. And, this is important, say no to other things. Your language goals and dreams take first priority. Next, habit number three, don't cram. Instead of cramming or forcing yourself to learn for one or five hours, start small. Cramming may have worked for you with studying for tests, but language learning is a marathon, not a sprint. So if you do five hours now, you'll burn yourself out. You'll hate the learning, and that's not good. That's how you fail at your goals and dreams. But if you can do five to 15 minutes a day, every day, learning won't be overwhelming, and you'll be successful in the long run. So how do you create this habit? If you've set your small, measurable goal and routine, you're good to go. Habit number four, prepare lines and conversations ahead of time. If you're like most language learners, speaking is your weak point. And a lot of the time, it's because you just don't know what to say. You don't have the words in your head. This is where preparation comes in. So imagine you meet a person for the first time. What do you say to each other? Hello, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? What are your hobbies? If you prepare these questions and answers ahead of time, you then have things to ask and say. So how do you do this? If you're learning on the website, check out our top 25 questions lessons that teach you questions and answers that we use all the time in conversations. For example, what's your name? Where are you from? How old are you? How was your weekend? Another way to prepare is to make a list of questions or phrases you want to say. Then get the translations for those. The point is, if you prepare lines like, my name is, I am from, this weekend I did this, the kind of lines you use all the time, you'll always have something to say. Habit number five, get into the habit of producing output. So input is taking language in, listening and reading, and output is putting language out, so speaking and writing. The point here is, it's easy to just sit and listen and watch YouTube videos. You can listen to lessons all day long, but listening helps with listening. It won't get you speaking the language. So the easiest ways to produce output are, for speaking, repeat what you hear out loud. That's called shadowing. And for writing, write things out by hand. You can copy out our lesson dialogues or just copy the sentences out of a textbook. Habit number six, come back and review. And that's because reading something once doesn't mean it'll be in your brain forever. So this is where reviewing comes in. In order to master grammar, words, or phrases, you must go back and review. How do you do this? Spaced repetition flashcards are a great example of this. A lot of language learners use these because with spaced repetition, you get to see words again and again over spaced periods of time, and that improves your memory. Another simple thing you can do is download and save our lessons. Replay them later. Download our dialogue tracks. These give you just the conversation from that lesson, no translations. Make a playlist on your phone and listen as much as possible, just like with songs. Soon, you'll know tons of practical conversations by heart. Next, habit number seven, look for solutions. There's one interesting thing that separates new learners from successful learners. It's how they react when they don't understand something. Because beginners completely rely on the study tools they use, they tend to blame them too. You'll often hear that someone gave up because the textbook was too boring, or it won't help them speak. But if you realize a book won't help you speak, it's not the book's fault, is it? And if you complain that a class doesn't help you speak, but you're not raising your hand at every opportunity either, whose fault is it? So experienced learners look for solutions. Get into the habit of coming up with a solution for your problem. Habit number eight, focus on what you're good at. And you should do this because it's overall motivation. If you're generally better at speaking than writing, then you're more likely to enjoy it, which means you're more likely to continue with it. And that means it's a successful routine. Habit number nine is don't procrastinate, which is easier said than done. Most of us procrastinate. And a lot of that is a result of overthinking. Let's say you plan on studying today. So you remember, ah, I have to study, I have to study. Now you're ruining it in your head. It becomes something you have to do. It's a hassle now. But if you set a small, measurable goal and have a simple routine, spend five minutes, then you know you just need to put in five minutes and you're done. So if you want to beat procrastination, make your goals and routines easy. 
And number 10, remember that learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. So there's no need to do five hour cram sessions and burn yourself out. Five or 10 minutes is good enough. Remembering this is a good habit to have. If you're having a bad day, if you can't remember some grammar, it's not all over. It's just a minor bump in the road. Another thing that helps is considering the resources you use. Sticking with quick five minute lessons that are easy to finish will help keep you in the marathon. Now, speaking of lessons and resources, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Ultimate Guide to Learning and Mastering Language eBook. This is a 52-page eBook that covers the learning tactics I just talked about, setting goals, staying motivated, learning faster. If you're interested in learning strategies, be sure to download it. Next, the Sport and Exercise Conversation Cheat Sheet. If you want to talk about sports and fitness in the language you're learning, then you'll love this PDF cheat sheet. And finally, how to improve your speaking skills. It's another language strategy lesson. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, because this is the very first episode of the monthly review, we're asking you, yes you, to submit a video of yourself speaking the language. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute audio or video clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month premium plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode, so a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about why your worst days are the best days to study. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line by line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, Sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Hi everyone, welcome to the ultimate Portuguese pronunciation guide. In this lesson, you'll learn all 13 Portuguese vowel sounds. 
A, A, AN, E, P, EN, I, IN, O, O, ON, U, UN. By learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Portuguese. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The first vowel is a, la, alface, amor. This vowel sound is very similar to the A in father. This vowel sound is considered an open A sound because the jaw is low and the mouth is wide and open. Listen to how Jade pronounces this vowel. A, a. A, a. The next vowel is manhã, cama, banana. This vowel sound is similar to the previous sound, except that it's the closed variant of the A sound. Compared to the previous sound, the jaw isn't opened as wide. It kind of sounds like the U in but. However, try to relieve the pressure from the back of the mouth slightly by moving the tongue forward a little. Pronouncing this sound quickly can also help with the pronunciation of this sound. A, 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 a. The next vowel is an, ângulo, lan, São Paulo. This is identical to the previous vowel sound, except there's nasalization. Nasalization means to pronounce it through the nose. Touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth and follow the groove to the back of the mouth. Could you feel the bone at the roof of your mouth? As you move further to the back of the roof of the mouth, there is a fleshy section that doesn't contain bone. This soft tissue that hangs at the back of the roof of the mouth is called the velum. The velum is raised when pronouncing oral sounds. To produce nasality, lower the velum to allow air to travel freely into the nasal cavity and out through the nose. Listen to Jade pronounce this nasal vowel. Un, 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 un. The next vowel is e, serra, meta, café. This vowel sound is identical to the e in set. It's known as the open e sound in Portuguese. É, 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 é. The next vowel is e. Ser, medo. It's similar to the e in the word ne. However, try not to carry over the i sound too much. This is known as the closed e sound in Portuguese. E. 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 The next vowel is E. Centro, sempre, essência. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. Remember, you want to pronounce it through your nose. E. E. E, e. The next vowel is e, sinal, dia, país. This is identical to the i in the word ski. The vowel i doesn't have any open or closed variants. E, e, e. E. The next vowel is in. Sinto, sim, ímpar. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. In, 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 in. 
The next vowel is O, Avó, Famosa, Oculus. This is identical to the O in the word hot. This sound is known as the open O sound in Portuguese. O, 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 O. The next vowel is O, Avô, Oliveira, Ovo. This is similar to the previous sound, except that it's the closed version. This means that the mouth and tongue are positioned a little bit higher. It's quite similar to the O sound in the word coal. Listen to Jade. O, 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 O. The next vowel is on. Conto, vontade, bom. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. On, 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 on. The next vowel is u, rua, saúde, maduro. This is identical to the u in the word rule. There are no open or closed variants for the U sound in Portuguese. U, 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 U. The last vowel sound for this lesson is um, fungo, algum, cumplice. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. Um, 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 um. Well done! You've just learned all 13 vowel sounds in Portuguese. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in the Portuguese language. Isn't that great? E aí, gente, joinha? How are you? I'm Paloma. Eu sou a Paloma. Welcome to another Top Portuguese Words. Today's topic is Top 10 Most Common Tourist Vocabulary. Are you ready for traveling? Você está pronto para viajar? Let's do it! Passagem. Ticket. Passagem. Ticket. Precisamos comprar as passagens de ônibus para a viagem. We need to buy the bus tickets for the trip. Precisamos comprar as passagens de ônibus para a viagem. Passagem is usually referring to a bus or a train ticket. And if you're talking about an entrance ticket, we say entrada. Turista. Tourist. Turista. Tourist. Turista. Essa praia é a preferida dos turistas. This beach is tourist's favorite one. Although turista ends in A, you can use it both for male and female. O turista and a turista. Guia de viagem. Guidebook. Guia de viagem. Guidebook. É melhor comprar um guia de viagem para escolher os lugares que você quer visitar. It's better to buy a guidebook to choose the places you want to visit. É melhor comprar um guia de viagem para escolher os lugares que você quer visitar. If you don't want to buy a guidebook, you can also search on the internet and find the places you want to go visit. But it's always good to have it written down, so in case you get lost, you can just ask someone and you have it written so the person can also read it in case they need. Templo Temple Templo, temple. Este templo é belíssimo. This temple is beautiful. Don't confuse templo with tempo. Templo is temple and tempo is weather or time. Temos tempo para ir no templo? Do we have time to go to the temple? Mesquita, mosque. Mesquita, mosque. Mesquita. 
Hoje vamos visitar a Mesquita do Brás. Quer ir com a gente? Today we're going to visit Brás Mosque. Would you like to come with us? We don't have many mosques in Brazil, but yes, we have a few if you want to visit. And also Mesquita is a common surname in Brazil. Igreja Church Igreja Church Escolhi um roteiro para conhecermos as igrejas de Ouro Preto. I chose a tour for us to visit Ouro Preto's churches. Ouro Preto is a city in Minas Gerais state and it's very famous for its colonial churches and historical buildings. Also, it's very nice to go there during carnival season. Cachoeira Waterfall Cachoeira Waterfall É uma delícia tomar banho de cachoeira. Você tem que ir com a gente. It's delightful to take a natural shower at the waterfall. You have to come with us. I think you can find waterfalls almost everywhere in Brazil. In São Paulo State, we have a lot of waterfalls, also minas. Yeah, so many states. <laughs> and it's very common to tomar banho de cachoeira. That means to shower at the waterfall. But actually means to swim at the waterfall. Excursão. Tour. Excursão. Tour. Você também vai na excursão para Paraty? Are you going to the tour to Paraty too? Você também vai na excursão para Paraty? Excursão can be a sightseeing tour and it can also be a school tour. You know, uma excursão para o museu, a tour to the museum while you're at school. And Paraty is a very nice city in Rio State that is very worth visiting. Guia. Guide. Guia. Guia. Já sei falar bem português. Não vou precisar de guia quando visitar o Brasil. I already speak Portuguese well. I will need a guide when I visit Brazil. That would be so awesome if you're able to say that. But if you don't, don't worry. You can just say, Eu preciso de um guia em inglês. I need an English guide. Ônibus turístico. Tour bus. Ônibus turístico. Tour bus. Ônibus turístico. Vamos fazer um passeio com este ônibus turístico? Ele já tem um percurso planejado e vamos visitar vários lugares legais. Shall we take this tour bus? They already have a planned route and we'll visit many nice places. Some cities like Curitiba have also the city tour bus that you can use to visit the most special places in the city. For example, if you go to Curitiba, you can't miss Ópera de Arame, and Jardim Botânico, besides many other nice parks they have in there. Acabou! The end! Thanks a lot for watching and let us know in the comments the words you already know in Portuguese for traveling and the words you don't know and want to learn. Até a próxima! Tchau, tchau! Hey everyone! Welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal, something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn, one, why these bad days happen, and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining, no bad news, but you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great, but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. 
That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good, you're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much. And this affects your mood and motivation. So you're not as excited to learn anymore. So you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad, but that's completely natural and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement. And it doesn't matter if you do a 10 minute lesson or a five minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode, so a lot of learners will see you and your progress, and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head, and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. 
Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. In this series, you'll master Portuguese pronunciation. Proper pronunciation is essential in Portuguese. And in this series, you'll learn it in a fast, comprehensive, and easy way. In this first lesson, you'll learn about the building blocks of the Portuguese pronunciation system that will help you in future lessons. The letters used in Portuguese are the same as the letters you use in English, but with a few additional accents that are used to modify some of the letters. Portuguese is made up of 26 letters, consisting of 21 consonants and 5 vowels. But be careful not to fall into a very common trap. As you're learning to speak correctly, you shouldn't concern yourself with all the letters. That's right, forget them. You care about the sounds of Portuguese, and here they are. There are 23 consonant sounds and 13 vowel sounds. By using all of these sounds, you can form every single word in Portuguese. Still seem complicated? Well, how about this? Of the 23 consonant sounds in Portuguese, you already know 20 of the original sounds. That's right. If you're a native English speaker, then you already make these sounds every day. You could also ignore most of the vowel sounds for the same reason. All you have to do, however, is distinguish between open, closed, and nasal vowel sounds. The only thing standing between you and perfect Portuguese pronunciation are three new consonant sounds and the difference between the vowel sounds. You can handle that. Now let me introduce Jade, who will be helping you to master these new sounds. Oi, o meu nome é Jade Furuta. Jade will be giving you native pronunciation examples for you to imitate. But for this first lesson, just sit back and listen to the unique sounds of Portuguese. Velho. Manhã. Bravo, seu, cantar, avó. In the next lesson, we'll look at the top five pronunciation mistakes Portuguese learners make. You'll want to make sure not to fall into these common traps. After that, we'll begin going through the vowels and consonants of Portuguese. This is your chance to learn how to correctly say all of the words you just heard. We'll finish up the series by covering some special topics that will really make your Portuguese sound natural. To close this lesson, here's a question for you. Why is it important to spend time on learning proper pronunciation, even if you're already an advanced speaker? The answer, you will be understood, and this will help you build more confidence as you communicate in Portuguese. For beginners, you're creating a strong foundation to build on, and for more advanced students, this is your chance to improve your accent and lose any bad habits you may have picked up. In this lesson, you'll learn the top five Portuguese pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that students of Portuguese tend to make. So pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Number one, can't pronounce rolled R's. For many Portuguese learners, pronouncing the rolled R can be a difficult task. Listen to some examples. Caro, Brasil, Ler. The only way to solve this problem is to keep listening to native Portuguese speakers and practicing it yourself or practicing with us. It's quite a complex sound, but luckily for you, we have a small trick that can help you. If the R is not followed by a vowel, and if you are familiar with other dialects, you can use different accents to pronounce it properly without having to use the rolled R sound. Listen to the following examples. Porta, 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 ler, ler, ler. 
Check out lesson six to master the pronunciation of the elusive rolled R. This is arguably the most difficult sound for Portuguese learners to pronounce correctly. Um. It is similar to the ow sound in English, but with nasality. Saying the word pound repeatedly may sometimes help with pronouncing the sound. But again, the best way is to listen to native speakers and try to imitate them. Listen to the following examples. Pão, são, coração. We'll cover this sound and more diphthongs in lesson seven. Number three, can differentiate between open and closed vowels. Unlike English, Portuguese distinguishes many vowel sounds based on their openness. Openness just refers to how widely your mouth opens up when pronouncing the vowel sound. The letters A, E, and O each have an open and closed variant, and many Portuguese words differ only in the openness of the vowel. That's why it's so important to get the proper pronunciation, otherwise you'll likely be misunderstood. Listen to the following examples. Avô, avó, massa, maçã. We'll cover all the different Portuguese vowel sounds in the next lesson. The letters D and T can sometimes be pronounced differently from what you would expect. First, let's see the two ways you can pronounce the D. Saudade, saudade, idioma, idioma. Now pay attention to the T sounds. Sorvete, sorvete, atividade, atividade. The way you pronounce them varies based on the region you're visiting in Brazil. Don't worry about it too much, though, because they're just that, variations. Both pronunciations are correct, and you'll be understood regardless of which one you use. The letters J and G can sometimes be pronounced like J. It sounds like the S in pleasure. The problem arises when speakers begin substituting the English J or G sound for this sound. Listen to Jade and pay attention to the way it's pronounced in the following words. Julio, agenda, geleia. Don't worry if you don't get it straight away because we'll break down this sound in lesson five. Now you know the top five Portuguese pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make these same mistakes. Want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. In this lesson, you'll learn all 13 Portuguese vowel sounds. A, A, an, e, p, en, i, in, o, o, on, u, un, by learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Portuguese. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The first vowel is... A, la, alface, amor. This vowel sound is very similar to the A in father. This vowel sound is considered an open A sound because the jaw is low and the mouth is wide and open. Listen to how Jade pronounces this vowel. A, A. A, A. The next vowel is manhã, cama, banana. This vowel sound is similar to the previous sound, except that it's the closed variant of the A sound. Compared to the previous sound, the jaw isn't opened as wide. It kind of sounds like the U in but. However, try to relieve the pressure from the back of the mouth slightly by moving the tongue forward a little. Pronouncing this sound quickly can also help with the pronunciation of this sound. Ah, 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 ah. The next vowel is ang. Ângulo, lã, São Paulo. This is identical to the previous vowel sound, except there's nasalization. Nasalization means to pronounce it through the nose. Touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth and follow the groove to the back of the mouth. Could you feel the bone at the roof of your mouth? As you move further to the back of the roof of the mouth, there is a fleshy section that doesn't contain bone. 
This soft tissue that hangs at the back of the roof of the mouth is called the velum. The velum is raised when pronouncing oral sounds. To produce nasality, lower the velum to allow air to travel freely into the nasal cavity and out through the nose. Listen to Jade pronounce this nasal vowel. Um. 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 The next vowel is E. Serra. Meta. Café. This vowel sound is identical to the E in set. It's known as the open E sound in Portuguese. É. 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 The next vowel is E. Ser. Medo. It's similar to the E in the word ne. However, try not to carry over the I sound too much. This is known as the closed E sound in Portuguese. E. 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 The next vowel is E. Centro. Sempre. Essência. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. Remember, you want to pronounce it through your nose. Ain, 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 ain. The next vowel is e, sinal, dia, país. This is identical to the I in the word ski. The vowel I doesn't have any open or closed variants. E, 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 E. e. The next vowel is in, sinto, sim, impar. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. In, 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 in. The next vowel is o, avó, famosa, óculos. This is identical to the o in the word hot. This sound is known as the open O sound in Portuguese. O, 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 O. The next vowel is O, avô, oliveira, ovo. This is similar to the previous sound, except that it's the closed version. This means that the mouth and tongue are positioned a little bit higher. It's quite similar to the O sound in the word coal. Listen to Jade. O, 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 O. The next vowel is on. Conto, vontade, bom. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. On, 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 on. The next vowel is U, Rua, Saúde, Maduro. This is identical to the U in the word rule. There are no open or closed variants for the U sound in Portuguese. U, 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 U. The last vowel sound for this lesson is um, fungo, algum, cumplice. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. Um, 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 
Um, um. Well done. You've just learned all 13 vowel sounds in Portuguese. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in the Portuguese language. Isn't that great? In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Brazilian Portuguese pronunciation. Pronunciation refers to the manner in which a word is spoken. So don't focus on reading what's on screen. Instead, focus on listening and repeating. In Brazilian Portuguese, vowel sounds are represented by five characters. There are 13 basic vowel sounds that create several diphthongs and triphthongs, which are vowel sound combinations. Let's take a look at how some of the basic vowels are pronounced. A, E, I, O, U. The more closed vowels are E, O. And there are the nasal vowels A, E, I, O, U. Diphthongs are two vowel sounds pronounced closely together to form a gliding sound. Here are some examples. Ão, oi, eu. Finally, triphthongs are gliding sounds made by three vowel sounds. Why, we, wão. Diacritics are in some cases used in vowels to signify certain ways of pronunciation. But don't worry about them for now. We'll eventually get there. Nasal vowels are very common in Portuguese, and they may seem a little tricky. To correctly produce nasal vowels, you should relax your soft palate and the back of your tongue so the nasal passage is not blocked. It's like humming with your mouth open and adding the vowel sound to it. Let the air pass through both your oral and nasal passages. Listen and repeat after Ana. Banco. 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 There are 21 basic consonant sounds in Portuguese represented by 20 characters. The consonant sounds in Portuguese can be very similar to English as well as some vowels. Let's take a look at the consonants combined with a vowel. Pa, pa, ta, da, ka, ga, ma, na, nha, fa. Va, sa, za, ja, sha, ha, la, lia, ra, chi, ji. As you can see, most sounds are the same in English. Let's see in this case. Chow. The first sound is the same as the ch in change. The second one is the same as the ow in out. Listen again. Chow. See how they sound the same? That means you only have to learn a few new sounds to speak Brazilian Portuguese. As you just learned, there are a lot of identical sounds between English and Portuguese. So let's take a look at the unique sounds of Brazilian Portuguese. There are three Portuguese consonants not shared with English as well as the nasal vowels already seen in this lesson. Let's take a closer look at one of these consonants. Fruta. Focus on the second letter. Ru. This trill sound is done by lightly tapping the gum ridge behind your upper teeth with the tip of your tongue. It should be a quick, striking motion, similar to the sensation you get when pronouncing the T in words like butter, cutter, and so on. Don't roll your tongue like an English R. Most of the air should go around the sides of your tongue. Listen and repeat after Ana. Fruta. 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 Well done. Note that this trill is present in the first word we learned in the previous lesson. Do you remember it? Obrigado. Obrigada. Okay, so let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learn the characters that represent vowel sounds in Portuguese and that the language uses diacritics. Most consonant sounds in Portuguese are the same as in English, and there are some unique sounds in Portuguese, nasal vowels and three consonants. We've covered only the basics of Portuguese pronunciation. If you're interested in learning more, check out the entire course we created named The Ultimate Guide to Portuguese Pronunciation. In that course, we cover and break down every single sound in the Portuguese language, showing you mouth and tongue positioning and giving you tips to help you perfect your Portuguese pronunciation. 
top 10 hardest words to pronounce in Portuguese. Avó, grandmother. Here you need to hear the sound of the last O in the syllable. It should be a, an open O as we say in Portuguese. Avó. A minha avó faz um bolo delicioso. My grandmother makes a delicious cake. Avô. Grandfather. Can you hear the difference between avó and avô? Here you have a closed O. Avô. Meu avô era um inventor. My grandfather was an inventor. Cachorro. Dog. Here you may find the CH, cho, and the double R, ho, a little different for you. O nome do meu cachorro é Toy. The name of my dog is Toy. Coração. Heart. This word may be hard for you because of the R-A, ra, and the C-A-O, são. A minha almofada tem formato de coração. My pillow is heart-shaped. Mãe, mother. Here you also have a nasal sound, mãe. A minha mãe está brava comigo. My mother is angry at me. You can also say mamãe, which is mommy in English. Mão, hands. Also here we have a nasal sound, mão. Remember to use your nose to say these words. A minha mão tem cinco dedos. My hand has five fingers. Mulher, woman. Mulher has this lhe, which is L-H. It's not that hard, right? Mulher. Onde fica o banheiro das mulheres? Where's the women's bathroom? Orelhão. Payphone. I love this word in Portuguese because orelhão is big ear. And because Brazilians payphones look like big ears here. Eu não consigo encontrar um orelhão. I can't find a payphone. Yeah, everyone has cell phone today. Quarteirão. Block. So here you also have this nasal sound and the R, quar. It's not hard, but you need to practice that to, you know, be more fluent. But if you use the caipira accent, it would be quarteiro, which is easier for English speakers. There's also a McDonald's burger that is called quarteiro. It's really big. Trabalho, job. So also you have the R and the LH here, trabalho. You can also use the word trabalho to mean job and work. Eu gosto muito do meu trabalho. I really like my job. Or, eu tenho muito trabalho hoje. I have a lot of work today. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Always a very common phrase in Brazil because when you meet someone, you want to greet him or her, you just say oi to everyone. Uh, you can also use olá, that is very common, but o is more common than olá. Oi, gente! Hi, everyone! That is used to mean that you have something. For example, eu tenho uma irmã, I have a sister. But it's also used to say age. For example, eu tenho 24 anos, I am 24 years old. Que legal is also very useful because when you want to say that something is cool or something is nice or that you're excited about something, you just say que legal. So, que legal que você está aprendendo português. That's nice that you're learning Portuguese. This is a very Brazilian word. It means way. So, for example, you could say, eu vou dar um jeito nesse problema. I'll find a way to fix this problem. But we use a lot to say jeitinho brasileiro. That means Brazilian ways. It's just the way to do everything in the easiest possible way to find a solution or, you know, to go back home and have a beer and barbecue. <laughs> Boa tarde is the way you greet people after noon until 5 or 6 p.m., until dawn. So you could say, espero que você tenha uma boa tarde. I hope you have a good afternoon. It's used a lot in news, but it's not very common in informal language, in everyday casual conversations. Há três pessoas nesta sala. There are three people in this room. Prazer is a nice phrase because it's actually a word, so it's very short. You can use more complex phrases like prazer em conhecê-lo or é um prazer, but prazer is enough. So if you're learning Portuguese, you can say, eu sei muitas palavras em português. I know many words in Portuguese. Estou bem means I'm fine. So if you're not fine, you can say estou mal or não estou bem, I'm not fine. Como você está? Or tudo bem? You can say estou bem. So you can say eu vi esse filme semana passada. I saw this movie last week. 
Obrigado is super important because you need to thank people when you ask something. So, obrigado is how men would say it, and obrigado is how women say it. So, obrigada por assistir a nosso vídeo. Thank you for watching our video. Quando eu era criança, eu queria visitar o Japão. When I was a child, I wanted to visit Japan. So, if someone asks you, do you want to learn Portuguese? You can just say, sim, yes. Sim, eu quero aprender português. Yes, I want to learn Portuguese. Eu quero aprender português. I want to learn Portuguese. Or, ela quer ir ao Brasil. She wants to go to Brazil. So, as I said before, tudo bem is very useful. You can say tudo bem to maybe everything in Brazil. Você não quer sair? Tudo bem. You don't want to go out? That's okay. It can mean work or job. So, você gosta do seu trabalho? Do you enjoy your job? Desculpa, não foi a minha intenção. I'm sorry, that wasn't my intention. When you hurt someone or when you bump into someone in the street or when you want to apologize to someone, you just say, desculpa, eu falo português. I speak Portuguese. Or, eu falei com a minha amiga. I talked to my friend. If you really need to go to the restroom and you don't know where it is, you can say, onde fica o banheiro? Where's the restroom? Or if you want to find a beautiful beach that you heard about, you can say, onde fica a praia? Where's the beach? Quantos países você já visitou? How many countries have you visited already? If you want to ask someone, por que você chegou atrasado? Why were you late? Or if you want to complain with your boyfriend, say, por que você não me ligou? Why didn't you call me? So you can feel sick, estou sentindo mal, or sentir-se feliz, to feel happy. If you're shopping in Brazil and you buy a lot of stuff, you can just ask quanto que fica, how much is it, for the total of things you're buying. But if you want to ask just the price of a shirt, you can say quanto custa esta camiseta, how much is this shirt? Yeah, that's a very useful phrase if you want to buy something in Brazil. Amor means love, so you can say the person you love, amor. For example, amor, vem cá, honey, come here, or love, come here. Okay, so my final phrase is Vamos embora, let's go or let's leave. You can also say vamos embora or vambora, that is the fastest way to say it. We use it, for example, if a party is too boring and you can say que festa chata, vamos embora. What a boring party, let's leave. Or vambora, eu quero ir pra lá. Let's go, I wanna go there. O vídeo está acabando, então vamos embora. The video is ending then, let's leave. three reasons you're never too old to learn a language, and you'll also learn three ways our learning system can help people of all ages to study efficiently. Number one, seniors have better focus. Learning a new language in your 50s or 60s may actually be easier than learning as a teenager or young adult. More mature adults can better focus on the details necessary to master a new language. Older people are also often more dedicated to their goals and put more work into achieving them. Seniors are better able to focus on completing lessons and reaching goals. There are a lot of distractions out there these days for young people. There's everything from Facebook to Instagram and all the usual drama of daily life at work and at school. 
Seniors are typically less concerned with these kinds of things and are better at focusing on tasks until completion. This is extremely important for language study, where regular practice and attention to detail are key. Not only are you never too old to learn, you may have some advantages over younger learners. Our language learning program has a number of special tools to make learning a new language in your 50s or 60s easy. You'll use the same resources as a tech-savvy teenager. Number two, learning is vital to healthy and happy living. Learning is actually vital to your health. Doing things like playing word games, doing puzzles, and even using online platforms like Luminosity do help keep the mind nimble. But nothing compares to learning a second language in terms of health benefits for your mind. Learning another language may be one of the very best retirement hobbies you can pick up. You can also apply your second language knowledge when you travel. Number three, there are health benefits to learning new things after the age of 60. Learning a second language increases the number of neural pathways in the brain. Forging these new neural pathways helps you code and sort the new language you are learning. In addition, there are other brain health benefits associated with learning a new language. Here's a list of benefits bilingual people can enjoy. Higher overall general intelligence, better memory and memorization skills, better perception of surroundings, better focus, concentration, and attention to detail. So in a very real way, learning a new language is one of the best and most practical retirement hobbies you can find because it helps protect against cognitive decline as you age. Now let's talk about how our language learning program has methods to make sure you can start learning in your 50s, 60s, and beyond. Number one, we have an intuitive, easy to use system. Learning an old age doesn't have to be hard or irritating. It can and should be fun. From your very first lesson, we'll make sure you're speaking fluently every day. You can start and stop each lesson as many times as you want. Study when you want, where you want, and at the pace you decide. Number two, you'll find special tools to boost retention and performance. As we mature, learning to use the right tools is vital to getting jobs done fast and right. So we make it easier than ever to make learning in old age fun and rewarding with a wide range of tools to boost retention and performance, including spaced repetition flashcards, so you can learn vocab fast, line-by-line -line audio transcripts, so you can read along with each lesson, pronunciation and accent review, instructor lesson notes, review quizzes, 2000 core words, enough for fluency, you are truly never too old to learn with more than 20 tools and resources to help boost learning and performance. Number three, you'll get support every step of the way. Although you may never be too old to learn, it doesn't hurt to have a little help along the way. Our language learning system has helped thousands of seniors learn and master a new language with help and support at every step. We offer 24 seven assistance. Just send us an email. We have dedicated language experts standing by to help you with any problem or issue you may be experiencing. There is also instructor feedback. Have specific questions about a lesson or your progress? You can directly email instructors and get direct responses to any question you may have about your studies or lessons. Or try studying with your very own instructor. Members of our exclusive Premium Plus plan not only get a custom curriculum tailored to their very own goals, they also gain access to their very own language instructor. Learning in old age isn't just a luxury, it's crucial to helping avoid the onset of Alzheimer's, dementia, and other age-related cognitive issues. Specifically, learning another language helps increase overall intelligence and improve awareness, memory, and overall cognitive function. So not only are you never too old to learn a new language for health reasons, it's a great way to meet new people and start adventures. Want to cut your language studying time in half? In this video, you'll discover how learning a language using PDF lessons is convenient, efficient, and can help you cut your studying time nearly in half. Many people give up on their dream of learning a second language because traditional classroom instruction is too much of a hassle. Between getting to class, studying on someone else's schedule, and just the sheer expense of the book's intuition, traditional learning can be tough. Many people simply give up. Online classes are an option, but sometimes limited data plans can derail the dream of learning a new language. Fortunately, there is a solution, learning language using PDF lesson notes. 
let's take a closer look at how studying language lessons in PDF format can help you reach your dream in about half the time of normal video or audio lessons. First, print all lessons and PDF tools and take them with you anywhere. Sometimes a tiny smartphone screen just isn't adequate, especially when you're trying to learn something new. The great thing about PDF lessons is that they can be quickly printed and taken anywhere after you download them. In fact, printing out lessons in PDF format can actually save you time when compared to going through the material on a smartphone with a small screen, even with the extra printing time. Second, they're a great study tool to boost retention and mastery. Studying video or audio lessons online is a great way to learn a language because students can play and rewind sections as many times as needed until the lesson is mastered. But when you review the same lessons again in PDF format, an incredible thing happens. Your retention dramatically improves. Thanks to time-space repetition, seeing the information again in written format helps reinforce the information in your mind and improves both retention and recall. The benefits of learning a language using PDF lessons quickly add up to significant time savings for you, your data plan, and your dream of learning a new language. Third, all lessons in PDF format include in-depth instructor notes. We have thousands of HD video and audio lessons, and each one includes a PDF version with a line-by-line -line transcript so you can read along with the lesson as it appears online. In addition to the line-by-line -line transcript, all lessons include in-depth instructor notes with more information, sample sentences, explanations, and translations. The additional information and notes help you learn faster and with greater mastery than using the video or audio lessons alone. And when paired with language learning video games, video and audio lessons, or other study aids, our PDF lessons help you reach your dream of learning a new language faster and easier than many traditional classroom settings. Fourth, you can download the world's largest online collection of lessons by real instructors. Planning on going on vacation and don't know if you'll have reliable internet service? If you're learning through PDF lessons, it's not a problem. Once you download lessons in PDF format to your smartphone, PC, or favorite media device, they are yours to use and keep forever. Once downloaded, you can either print out or access your lessons in PDF format, regardless of internet access. When you consistently learn through PDF lessons, the time savings and benefits quickly compound. From quicker access to faster learning, PDF lessons can potentially reduce total study time required to learn a concept. Our PDF lessons include instructor notes and supplemental resources that help you learn faster and with less effort. Does having a study partner help you learn a language faster? For most people, having a friend or romantic partner who is a native speaker of their target language dramatically improves their ability to master the language. In this video, we'll talk about some ways to help you build relationships with people. We'll also talk about three reasons having a native speaker partner can improve your language fluency. First, knowing a native speaker helps you better understand the culture. Knowing a native speaker gets you connected with the culture in ways that no lessons or textbooks ever could. Native speakers are better informed about the latest slang expressions and know interesting places to eat and hang out. Having a friend or partner who is a native speaker can dramatically improve your understanding of the language. In addition to language, you can learn about cultural practices, gestures, and relationships. Second, having a native speaker partner increases your exposure to the language. Practice makes perfect is a well-known expression that is certainly true for language learning. When you have a friend, romantic partner, or study buddy, you speak to them through text messages, phone calls, and basic interaction. These are all opportunities for you to practice the language. Making an effort to practice will help your vocabulary quickly expand beyond simple greetings, flirtatious words, and basic comments to deeper, more meaningful conversations. Third, a supportive partner is the best study aid you can find. We all make mistakes, especially when trying to learn a new language. But if you have a supportive partner, they can gently point out your mistakes and help you find better ways to express yourself. And if your native speaker study partner is also your romantic partner, your motivation will likely be even higher than someone who does not have a romantic relationship with a native speaker. Now, let's look at three ways our language learning program helps you learn even faster if you have a native speaker partner. First, all resources and materials are available in English and in your target language. Studying with a partner is special because it's an opportunity for both of you to learn a new language. 
That's why every single lesson, transcript, vocabulary list, and resource on our website is available in English and in your target language. You can learn from each other. Second, lessons are designed to help you understand and engage with culture. On our website, our focus is to help our students learn practical vocabulary and phrases that are actually used in everyday conversation. This means that from your very first lesson, you can start applying what you learn immediately. So if you want to go out to a restaurant, play games, or attend a social function with your partner, you'll have the vocabulary and phrases necessary to have a great time. Third, access to special resources dedicated to romantic phrases. If your study partner is your romantic partner, we have resources to help you communicate your feelings correctly. Our language learning program has special sections and tools to teach you love words, phrases, and cultural insights. Of course, please remember that simply being in a relationship is no substitute for studying. Communication is key to every relationship, whether romantic or not. If you fail to continue expanding your vocabulary and you stop learning the language on your own, your relationships may suffer or fizzle out. Without question, spending time with native speakers can help you dramatically improve your language proficiency. But this is no replacement for focused studying. It's essential to help facilitate better communication and master the language. Want to transform your driving time into language learning time? How much time do you spend in your car every day? 30 minutes? More than an hour? Why not put this huge amount of time to good use? Instead of just listening to the radio during your daily commute, you could be learning a new language instead. Here are three easy methods for learning a language in your car. You can put them to use right away with the help of our language learning program. First, you can listen to fun audio lessons by real teachers. Listening to lessons while in the car allows you to focus on the road as you listen and learn. In every one of our three to 15 minute lessons, our teachers teach you conversations, new phrases, and cultural points. Audio is the only learning medium that lets you learn and drive safely at the same time. So take advantage of all our audio lessons available. Second, you can set your lessons on autoplay and go hands-free. Our autoplay feature lets you keep your hands on the wheel without even reaching for your device. Just set your lessons to autoplay one by one with our Innovative Language 101 app and never have to interrupt your focus on driving to switch to a new lesson. Third, you can repeat out loud and speak from your very first lesson. You want to speak a new language too, right? Well, you'll start learning conversations minutes into your lessons. All you have to do is listen and repeat out loud. Our teachers take you step by step through all of the words, phrases, translations, and grammar points. You're even prompted to speak out loud and repeat. The result? You understand it all and can speak your new language. Turn your commute into language learning time and have fun at the same time. Learning doesn't have to be a big commitment, like signing up for a college class. It can be fun and easy. In fact, it's as easy as pressing play. Our language learning programs will do the work for you. And with the exposure you get while driving on your daily commute, you'll be speaking and understanding real life language quickly. The best part? You can finally learn without even changing your schedule. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time, bye. The three powerful language learning lessons you'll pick up at the gym. And today, you're going to learn, one, how to approach your goals, two, how to find time to learn a language, and three, why you don't need the best possible routine or learning program. So, if you've ever spent time in the gym, you'll quickly see how similar training and language learning are. But before we move on, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, want to perfect your pronunciation? Then get our new pronunciation PDF cheat sheet right now. You'll learn how to sound like a native speaker and how to practice your pronunciation. Second, do you know the seven tested ways to learn language fast? With this new ebook, you'll learn how to use our learning system to speak better, remember more words, and improve fast. Download it for free right now. Third, 20 useful phrases for a hair salon. Would you be able to get a haircut in your target language? If you said no, then this one minute lesson is just what you need. Fourth, 20 phrases for doing business successfully. 
If you're learning the language for work, this one minute lesson is for you. You'll learn the 20 most common greetings, phrases, and questions for business meetings. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The three powerful language learning lessons you'll pick up at the gym. The first lesson is how to approach your goals and language learning. So, why are we talking about the gym? The gym is a great example because it's filled with people working on their goals and it gives you a snapshot of where most people are with their goals. And everyone there has one goal, to be fit. But not everyone is there yet. You have a few people that look like fitness models. Then you have around 20 or 30 people that have good, respectable physiques, the middle group. And then the rest of the people are still working their way up. It's motivating because everyone has a chance of succeeding. If you've been to the gym, you understand the importance of repetition, doing reps. A rep is the number of times you do a certain exercise. Like 15 push-ups is 15 reps of push-ups. So even people still working toward their goals have a chance of succeeding if they put in the reps. If they do a little bit a day over a long period of time, they'll get there. The process is simple. The more you do, the longer you stick with it, the more progress you make. And the same goes for learning language or any other goal in life. It's about putting in the reps a little bit a day, consistently, for a long period of time. If you want to get bigger muscles, you pick up a dumbbell and you do reps. If you want to learn more words, you do the reps. Five new words a day. So, what can you do right now? For example, if you're using our program, just do one lesson a day. If you have a textbook, do one page a day. If you're using an app, put in five minutes a day. Again, everyone has a chance to succeed. They just need to put in the reps and they need to make the time. This is where the second lesson comes in. You'll learn how to find and make time to learn a language. There's a reason the people you see at the gym daily, and especially the people you see at 10 p.m. on a Friday, are the ones with above average results. They're the most consistent. But how do they get that level of consistency? There tend to be three types of people. First, the people that have plenty of free time, so it's a non-issue for them. Second, the busier people. They make time regardless of what their schedule is like, meaning they show up at 1 a.m. just to fit in a session, or they cancel other plans to make time. And third, the people who have made it a habit. They're so used to going that they don't have to think about it. Ideally, you want to be in the third group with language learning, but most people fall into the second group. The truth is that to make time, they have to cancel other plans. Some wake up earlier to squeeze in a session in the AM. Some go late at night. It's the same exact thing with language learning. You make time. The good news with language learning is you don't need to open up a lesson at 1 AM and put in an hour. With our learning program, you'll get our quick but powerful three to 15 minute audio and video lessons. And because the lessons are short, you can easily make time. You can do a lesson on your commute or while walking somewhere. Imagine learning a quick conversation while on your way to the store. Finally, the third language learning lesson you'll learn at the gym is why you don't need the best possible routine to get results. Have you ever heard a friend say, I have to start the right way. It has to be perfect. Well, this is a disastrous way to start anything, whether fitness or language learning. And most learners spend a lot of time worrying about starting right instead of just starting and keeping at it. But the point is, if you start learning from a textbook and stick with it, you'll get results. You'll improve your reading, vocabulary, and grammar. Of course, it won't get you speaking. You'll only get good at what you focus on. But the fact is, you'll still make progress. Same with the gym. If you start off with bicep curls, you'll see progress in time. But at some point, you'll need to add in legs as well. You can't skip leg day. So here's what you can learn. Here's what smart beginners do. They don't look for the best way to start, they just start and keep going. And once they have a consistent routine, they start optimizing, they improve their routine. If you start taking one lesson a day and can easily maintain that routine, then you might eventually realize that you want to practice speaking. You need to shadow that lesson's conversation. So you add shadowing to your routine, and that's how you grow. Same thing with the gym. The smart beginners make sure they do their reps and come in as much as possible. And doing the basics is enough for them to build muscle. 
Later on, they'll start adjusting their exercises and adding new ones. But you'll never get to that point if you overthink yourself into inaction and don't build that habit. So as long as you start and continue, most starting routines and learning methods are good enough. You don't need the best possible one right now. You could have the best possible language learning program, but if you don't use it consistently, it's useless. All right, so today you learned, one, how to approach your goals, two, how to find time to learn a language, and three, why you don't need the best possible routine or learning program. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the free lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to speak more of your target language, talking points for language learners. And today you're going to learn one, what talking points are, two, five talking points you can use to start conversations and maximize your speaking time, and three, how to get our conversation cheat sheets so you can speak even more of your target language and you'll find out how to get them for free. If you've always wanted to speak more in your target language, then this episode is for you. I'll get into this in just a bit. If you're like most language learners, then your number one goal is to speak more, right? You want to have fluent conversations with natives. It's a great goal to have. But for most language learners, speaking also happens to be their weakest skill. You may not know enough of the language to express yourself. You tend to run out of words and things to say, and you're just not sure how to start conversation. If you have at least one of these issues, then talking points are just what you need. Part one, what's a talking point? A talking point is a topic that invites discussion or argument. In other words, just something to talk about. It could be about yourself, your work, your hobbies, the weather, food, or what you did this past weekend. All of these are talking points. Here's an example to help you better understand talking points. Think of a conversation you'd have with a friend. You can ask, what did you do this weekend? They'll reply and then ask you back. The talking point here is the weekend. Let's say your friend says they went to a restaurant. That's a natural talking point to explore next. You can ask, what kind of restaurants do you like? Now you've covered two talking points. The more talking points you have, the more you can speak. And the same goes for your target language. The only challenge is you need to know the relevant words and phrases for that topic. For example, if you want to talk about the weekend, you need to know phrases and questions like, what did you do this weekend? I did this. What about you? In the next part, you'll discover five easy talking points that you can master with our learning program. Let's get into part two. Part two, five talking points you can use. The first one is learn how to introduce yourself in your target language. Why is this a powerful talking point? Introducing yourself is something you'll do again and again, every time you meet someone new. So learning the relevant phrases is a must. If you've done the first few lessons on our site, you can already do this. If not, then check out our absolute beginner lessons and the top 25 questions you must know lessons. You'll learn basic conversations with our quick three to 15 minute lessons. We'll give you the exact lines to use, along with the translations, so that you can use them in conversations. You can also use this talking point to continue a conversation. For example, if you've started with a different point, like the weather, then it makes sense to say, by the way, my name is... Talking point number two, the weather. This is a universal talking point. People like to talk or complain about the weather all over the world. In fact, just saying, it's really nice today, is enough to start a conversation with a native speaker. If you want to talk about the weather, check out our can-do lesson pathway called Can Talk About Weather. You'll find this pathway in the absolute beginner level of our lesson library. Talking point number three, compliments. Compliments are another great way to start a conversation or continue one. If you're running out of things to say, you can quickly transition and say something about their city, their country, or just, hey, I like your shirt. If you want to learn how to compliment, check out our compliments phrase list. This list is free to access for all users. If you don't know where to find it on our site, leave a comment in the comments below and we'll follow up. Point number four, ask for help. For example, you can ask for directions or about the price and let the conversation go from there. 
These are very basic phrases that you learn in our survival phrases lessons. If you want to strike up a quick dialogue, this is a great talking point to use. Point number five, learn phrases for transactions, like getting a room at a hotel, shopping, ordering food, or telling the taxi driver where to go. You may think that this isn't much of a talking point, but for the learners that are shy about talking to random native speakers for no reason, this is an easy way to start a dialogue. You have a good excuse. You wanna buy something so the staff will be happy to respond. Again, you learn all of these with our survival phrases lessons. Okay, let's move on to our last part. Part three, how to get our conversation cheat sheets. Lastly, I'm going to tell you how to get our collection of conversation cheat sheets for free. With these cheat sheets, you'll be able to talk about all kinds of topics, travel, hobbies, dating, family, weather, and much more, which means you can master a lot of talking points and speak more of your target language. If you'd like to get these cheat sheets, please leave us a comment in the comment section. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.